And there he is. We on the two shot there. Uh, and, That's me. <laughs> and, and he is a contributor to uh, Conservative Review as well. We want to welcome into the conversation now Alexandra Smith. She is the executive, dire uh, executive director of the political pack America Rising. Alexandra, welcome to the show. Good to see you again. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, this, I'm going to tell you right now, we're getting, a, we're getting a lot of phone calls on this, of this particular issue. Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer, says that President Trump sat on the sidelines during negotiations to fund or not fund the government. He says it was a bipartisan group of 20 senators that actually led the way out. Now, to a, a, a government opening up again. I thought, Alexandra, that that was the way it was supposed to work. I, th I thought the Senate was supposed to work itself out of its own own problems with either encouragement or direction or whatever from, from the president. But I didn't think the president was actually supposed to go down there and be on the field. But, but what's your reaction to Senator Schumer's statement? I mean, it's preposterous. It's not the president's job to keep the government open. It's Congress's. And this is something that the Democrats, including Chuck Schumer, knew all along. They knew all along that they needed 60 votes to keep the government open. And what they did is they arbitrarily tied funding, um, funding the government with DACA. And even though the DACA deadline isn't for, isn't until next month. Um, so basically what they did is they took this political hot potato. They tried to make an issue out of it to appease their base. Uh, meanwhile, you know, the president let Congress work it out, uh, and they did so um, in a much more timely fashion than the last shutdown uh, was worked out. Alexandra, going forward, how do you think this whole the whole DACA issue is going to play out? Do you think the Democrats have really overplayed their hand? Well, look, I mean, I think that the majority of the American people do support DACA. Um, you know, we, we don't believe in this country largely that we should be punished or we should be punishing people for the sins of their parents. Uh, you know, these are 700,000 people who were brought here, uh, not of their own volition. Um, and we have to do something with it. And I think, you know, I commend uh, President Trump and the Republican Congress for wanting to come up with a legislative solution to this rather than just passing another executive order. And so I think actually the fate of DACA given what the president has said about wanting to show empathy and wanting to uh, develop a solution for these individuals and what the Republican leaders in Congress have said, I think that DACA is on track to, to be fixed. Um, what, you know, what I think that Democratic leaders have done, though, is that they've really sort of, um, they've sort of broken the trust of, of the president and of Republican leaders um, by going on such a, a meaningless crusade. And I say meaningless not because DACA is meaningless, but because because of the fact that government funding had nothing to do with DACA. Yeah. Um, and there was still time for DACA to be fixed. Well, it, it presented an interesting optic. I, it, it, we've been taking phone calls throughout this show on this issue. Uh, and I'm, let's work one in now. We've got Wayne from California out there on the telephone lines. Wayne, you out there? Yes, I am. Thank you for having me on Newsmax tonight. Great panel. You're welcome. And, uh, what's, what's on your mind, Wayne? Well, I just wanted to go ahead and let the American people know, when was it the last, and, and the panel know, when was it the last time that we've had a president that made promises and that have kept 158 of his promises to the American people within 365 days. I've never known a politician to even after they promise and wine and dine and shrine and this and that, ever to even, once he got into office, to even think about keeping a person, uh, 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 his promise without leaving them in the Trevine somewhere. This president has come across 158 of his promises already. Well, this man... And, no, no, wait. I was just going to say thank you. I, you know what? Thanks for the call. And I want to give Alexandra time to step in here and, and, and see if she agrees with you or not. Alexandra, what's your reaction? Well, sure. I mean, look, I think that when President Trump came into office in 2016, he was coming on the heels of an election where the American people were sending a very powerful message to Washington. They were saying to everyone, both parties included with the election of Donald Trump, that we're tired of you. We're tired of the way things work in Washington, and we want to see something different. And I think that what's remarkable about this government shutdown and the, the Democrats' just terribly miscalculated strategy here is that it really just does speak to politics as usual. 
Um, you know, the fact is, is that, that the president and Republicans were willing to engage on DACA and all they wanted to do was fund the government. And the Democrats threw a tantrum over the weekend. And at the end of the day, this, the bill that was produced, the compromise bill, doesn't differ in any of the particulars um, from what was proposed by the Republicans before the weekend. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of keeping promises, I think what the Republicans have been doing has been promising all along. They want to keep the government funded and they want a solution to DACA. And I think that, that Democrats just threw a wrench into that for their own politically motivated purposes. Oh, exactly. It's a policy. And the problem with policy is that it has expiration dates, whether it be by another executive order or by self-imposed ones. And in this case, come March, there needs to be a legislative solution. The president has given that to the Congress. You would think that the Democrats would hold the Republicans' feet to the fire on this one, saying, we'll pass continuing resolutions. Sure, we'll do this. But you have made a promise that if we solve this, it goes away. Let's take a phone call from Bill, all the way up in Anchorage, Alaska. Bill, welcome to the show. Happy, happy to have you with us. Happy to be here, guys. What's uh, up? Appreciate all your hard work. Uh, can you hear me? I sure can. What's up, Bill? Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, appreciate all your hard work and Newsmax. Great show. Uh, Thank you. I, do, I have a couple. Ex I take respectfully a couple of exceptions to what sure. Alexandria said about how the majority of Americans are favorable for DACA and how the children shouldn't be punished for the sins of their parents. Uh, the majority of Americans are not favorable towards amnesty for illegal aliens. And uh, parents are always responsible for their children. So they came in illegally, they have to suffer the repercussions. Um, also, the fact that many of them were not children. Remember, the age was up to 31 years of age. Most of these people came in, they had no documentation. They just said, oh, I'm this old or I'm that old, and they were accepted on face value. No, 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 Bill, and I, I, you, you raise a very fair point, and it's a point that a lot of immigration activists, well, a lot, a lot of immigration activists like the Center for Immigration Studies will point out, is that the average age of these kids is actually 28, with upper age, upper age ranges into the mid-30s, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, and we don't know what their ages were, but it does... Alexandra, it does present a problem, and Bill makes a point. It's just that it seems when people are asked about dreamers, as opposed to uh, the unidentified group of illegal aliens, people do seem to have a little more sympathy with them, or am I wrong? No, so that's exactly what I was referring to, is that the DACA um, recipients are a, a discrete class. They're a, a group of 700,000 um, that entered this country with their parents as children. Um, these are people who have been here for most of their lives. They, they don't know the home country from which their parents came. They only speak English. Um, and so, you know, I think that what Americans are referring to when I say that they have a majority or DACA has a majority of support is that is that they're referring to that program specifically. Certainly on the issue of illegal immigration, I think that Americans are completely you know, are nearly completely in favor of stronger border protections. This is a very common sense issue. Um, and I think that when it comes to, um, you know, dealing with illegal immigration, yeah. it's very important to the American people. And I think it's something that the left often disregards, um, you know, really, I think, uh, to, to their uh, political... I, and um, I totally agree. And unfortunately, we're flat dab out of time. Alexandra Smith, executive, executive director of uh, Political Action Pack America, Rock.